Okay. All right, today we start the hard stuff. It's going to take concentration on your part. This is a table. You can see that. What we have here is something you already know on the left here or in the middle. These are the properties of exponents. Logarithms are really exponents. So their properties are very, very similar to the properties of exponents. Now this will help you do your homework, which is the whole idea of it. Here, let me, let me just kind of define what's going on here. Log is, uh, the base is usually referred to as B because it starts with the letter B, base. And then our arguments right here, this is log base B of A, where A is some number, and log base B of C, where C is some number, or maybe they're expressions. But when you see them added, what's really going on is the arguments are being multiplied. And this goes the other way as well. When you see log base B of two things that are multiplied, what's really going on is the individual arguments are being added. Notice they have the same base. It's very important, just like over here. The bases have got to be alike. Okay, or, or nothing. Ah, oh, that's what my cat's doing. Um, or nothing will be accomplished. These rules, mostly at least the product rule and the quotient rule, only work if the bases are exactly the same for the exponents, and that carries over to logarithms as well, because logarithms are really exponents. And then I put a numerical uh, example below, that log base five of seven plus log base five of four equals log base five of seven times four, and we know seven times four is 28. So this would be your answer right there. And the rules go on and on down like this. A very interesting rule, a very interesting rule of logarithms that you don't see anywhere else is that when you have an argument that has a power in it like that, that exponent comes down in front and multiplies the logarithm. So that log base B of X to the A power is A times log base B of X. And I'll put parentheses here to emphasize that this is A times log base B of X. And here's a numerical example that three comes down in front right there and then multiplies whatever log base five of seven equals. And that's the power rule. This is the power rule as it applies to exponents. This is the power rule as it applies to logarithms. Here's the quotient rule as it applies to exponents and as it applies to logarithms. When you see two logarithms with the same base being subtracted like this, it really means the arguments are being divided like that. So for instance, log base five of seven minus log base five of four is log base five of seven over four. That's very, very similar to this rule for exponents, that when the bases are the same and you're dividing, you subtract the exponents. 
x to the one power is x. We already know that three to the one power is three. That's called the power of one rule. Well, over here, look what you've got with logarithms. When the base and the argument are exactly the same, the exponent, that is the logarithm, equals one. Why? Because this is the exponent, that's the base. So this says that b to the one power equals b, which you already know is true. Ah, and I didn't change to numbers here. Well, I can do that now. Let's do it now. Woo, okay. Let's take log base three of three. Log base three of three is one. Why? Because the base raised to that exponent equals the argument. So this is true only when the base and the argument are the same. Now here's the zero power rule. You know that any, any number other than zero raised to the zero power equals one. Well, it just so happens that when the argument is one in a logarithm, the base can be anything you want it to be. This out here will be zero. The logarithm as a whole equals zero when the argument is one. Why? Because the base five raised to the zero power is one. So you'll have this to refer back to as we do the homework, but let's do the homework by all means. We start out very simple, so you can use the basic rules. Here we have log base six of 31 times 12. Well, that refers back to this first rule. Okay, log base B of A times C equals log base B of A plus log base B of C. All of that noise you hear in the background is my cat playing with an empty box that just arrived from Amazon today. Boxes are so much fun for cats. They're kind of fun for humans too. Okay, equals log base B of 31 times 12. This is how it works. Log base six of 31 plus log base six of 12. Now, what is she doing? I don't know. Okay, see that? Log base six of 31 plus log base six of 12. Now here, even the book would usually put parentheses around the argument because there are really two different values there. There's 19 times W. 19W is 19 times W. So we're going to rewrite this because it says, the instructions say, express as the sum or difference of logarithms, log base five of 19 plus log base five of W. And that's the answer. Okay. 
Now in LN, remember, is just log base E. So LNs have the same rules as logs because they're both logarithms. This will be the LN of C plus the LN of D. And that's your answer. Uh, now we're going to go into the power rule right here. It says express as a product. A product means two things are being multiplied. When you have an argument raised to a power, the argument of a logarithm, the exponent comes down in front and multiplies the logarithm. So what they mean by product is you bring the nine down in front, and then you multiply that by log, and what base? 10 of A, understood base 10. We talked about that yesterday. Now here we have log base capital M of X raised to the negative five power. We can deal with that. The negative five power comes down in front. And then that multiplies log base M of X. And this is called the power rule. And it is the second rule right here. The power rule for exponents, the power rule for logarithms. So at first we're using the product rule. Then we switch to the power rule. Even though they're using the word product, that's because this is nine times the log of A. So that is a product, you're multiplying. Now express as a difference. That means you're going to subtract. We're going to use the quotient rule now, right here. The quotient rule for exponents the quotient rule for logarithms. So here we go. The log of y over z, that's your argument. The base is 10, it's understood to be 10. This will be log y minus log z. Log y minus log z. And I should add that if you see log y minus log z, you can put them together into one log by saying log y over z. And the same thing with ln's. The ln of S over N says express that as a difference of logarithms. The word difference means subtract. So this is going to be the ln, which is log base E, 
the ln of s minus the ln of n. And ln means natural logarithm. While we're at it, I know we talked about this yesterday, but when you have base 10 there, understood 10, that's called the common logarithm. We talked about that too. But review is a great thing. Common logarithm. And the LN is the natural logarithm. Now, before we start the slightly harder problems, more difficult problems, now that we've done some very, very basic logarithm problems, let's go back to the table because this is going to make a lot more sense to you now. When you see two logarithms being added, provided they have the same base, you know that you are going to multiply the two arguments. Same here. The two arguments get multiplied, and that's 28. Now, when you see a logarithm's argument, and there's an exponent there, you typically pull the exponent down in front, and you multiply a times the logarithm with its argument, its base and its argument. So log base 5 of 7 to the third power will be 3 times log base 5 of 7. And if you really had to know what that number is, you see it's much easier this way because you're going to have to use the, uh, uh, um, the change of base formula, the COB, the change of base formula. It's much easier here to say log 7 divided by log 5, get an answer, and then multiply that by 3, than it is this way. To take the log of x to the a divided by the log of b. You could get something wrong more easily this way than this way. Okay, here's the difference, okay? Difference means subtract, and when you subtract, that means that your argument is a fraction. Okay, and whenever your base and your argument are the same, the logarithm equals one. Whenever, it doesn't matter what the base is, whenever the argument is one, the logarithm equals zero. By the way, the argument of the logarithm is never, ever zero. We haven't talked about the domain yet. We will. Rest assured. Okay, so you definitely want to have these memorized by the final exam, okay? Okay. Now, let's move on to something much more interesting. You've got the log, what's the base? 10, understood 10. You've got the log of this argument, x squared minus 7x minus 8, and then you're subtracting the log of this argument, x squared minus 1. And they want us to express this as a single logarithm. We can do that. 
this is going to be the log of x squared minus 7x minus 8 over x squared minus 1. Well, this is a rational expression, and what do we do with those? Because the instructions say, and if possible, simplify. Well, I don't know if we can simplify. Not until we factor. So we have to factor. Equals the log of. This is going to factor, let's see. Negative 8 equals, yes, positive 1 times negative 8. And positive 1 plus negative 8 is negative 7, which is the middle number right here, negative 7. So the numerator is going to factor into x x plus 1 minus 8. Now the bottom is the difference of two squares. x squared minus 1 is really x squared minus 1 squared. So this factors into x plus 1 times x minus 1. The ultimate conjugates. And notice that x plus 1 and x plus 1 cancel out. So our answer is going to be the log of x minus 8 over x minus 1. And we have reduced this to a single logarithm. So see, we've gone backwards, if you want to think of it that way, with the quotient rule. And we've simplified a rational expression. Okay. Here we have log base b of, and I'm going to put parentheses around this argument because it's very complicated. All right, so what are we gonna do? We are going to slowly unpeel this. Notice that the instructions say express this log in terms of sums, that means addition, and differences, subtraction. Now this takes moving really, really, really slowly because you've got to be very very careful. So the very first thing we're going to notice is this. This is a fraction. We have a numerator. We have a denominator. So I'm going to think in those big chunks first. The 
The first way I'm going to write this is log. In fact, in fact, oh, I just had a brilliant idea. I am going to write the product of uh, write the property I'm using along with the step to help to help us all learn both. So the first thing I'm going to do is use the quotient rule because we do have a quotient. That is something being divided. A fraction is always really a quotient. So this is the quotient rule. Log base B. So it can be any kind of base. Log base B of P squared times Q to the fifth minus log base B of M to the third B to the eight. That's my first step. Now inside these arguments, I have two things being multiplied. That's a product. So this is a product. And this is a product. And something else. The product rule says we're going to take these arguments apart. This minus sign applies to this entire logarithm. So I'm going to temporarily put brackets around this so that I'll be sure to keep it all together because eventually I'm going to have to take this minus sign and distribute it. So whenever you see a minus sign, you have to realize that later in the problem, you may have to distribute. All right, now, that frees me up to deal with my products. And to do that, I'm going to use the product rule. OK, so what am I going to use the product rule on? This and then this. Log base, and it would not have hurt me to also put brackets around this, so I'm going to do that. It's less important with what comes first than what comes later. OK, log base B of P squared plus log base B of Q to the fifth power. Minus log base B of M cubed plus log base B of B to the eighth power. Oh. 
Okay, you may have already noticed that you've got a B and a B. This is going to make our work actually simplified a little bit. But right now, we're not going to break in to steps. We're going one step at a time. Look at each of these arguments. Each of them has an exponent or a power. So we're going to use the power rule here. And we're going to use the power rule here. And we're going to use the power rule here. And we're going to use the power rule. There. OK. So the power rule. Log bait, uh, uh, uh. I'm going to bring this two down in front there. So let me, let me make arrows. I love arrows. That two is going to go there. This five is going to go there. This three is going to go there. And this eight is going to go there. Okay. Okay, two log B of P plus five log base B of Q minus three log base B of M plus eight log base B of B. Going one step at a time, but here is something that's just happened that is wonderful. Right here. We have log base B of B. And this equals one. So what we now have in this position here is eight times one, which is eight. So let's get back to work. We now are just about done. We've got two log base B of P plus five log base B of Q. Now we're going to distribute the minus here and the minus here. 
That's why it was really important for me to have brackets. Not so much here. I didn't really need brackets in front. But after the minus sign, I absolutely had to put brackets or I would have gotten this right, the minus three, but this would have stayed a plus eight, which would be wrong and it would cause you to get the whole thing wrong. At least in the homework. On a test, I would give you partial credit if you showed your work. All right, so. Minus 3 log base B of M minus 8 because log base B of B equals 1. 8 times 1 is 8. So this is our answer. And you can think of this as a process of peeling the onion. You know, when you peel an onion, after you get the flaky stuff off, you've got these big sheets of onion and they get smaller and smaller and smaller, and they probably make you cry. Well, so does this. So I'm going to put this in a blue box. Now, you may be saying to yourself, oh my gosh, I don't believe this. That's what I said to myself when I was a student. This can't be true. But it is. It definitely is. And I know you have tons of questions, but this is the way you do it. And you're going to have all of next week to learn this stuff. Because I'm going to be playing Answer Lady on Monday and Tuesday. I'll be in the classroom if you need to come in and ask questions. Other than that, I'm not going to teach any new material. But you've got enough to learn to keep you busy. Okay. We move on. Now we've got the ln of 9 over 4 x to the 4th y. ln is just a logarithm. So we're going to use the quotient rule first. Just like we did before, because this is a fraction. So we're going to use the quotient rule. That'll give us the ln of 9 minus the ln of four times x to the fourth times y. We're going to be using the product rule because this is a product. You've got this stuff multiplied. It's a product behind a minus sign. So immediately, as soon as I realize that, I want to do this. Meanwhile, ln of 9 is pretty simple. ln of 9. So we're definitely going to use the product rule. We 
we've got the ln of 9 minus bracket the ln of 4 plus the ln of x to the fourth plus the ln of y. Well, this is a power. It's the only the only argument that has an exponent in it. So I get my little blue pin and I remind myself to do that. So I'm going to use the power rule now. We'll have the ln of 9, and we could go ahead and distribute and distribute and distribute, and when you do it, you could do that. But I believe in keeping my steps separate. So ln of 4 plus 4 ln x, plus ln y. And then, you know what, up here, I mean, uh, in the previous problem, I didn't give a, uh, a step to distribution, but it's very important. I mean, I did it, but I don't think I called it anything. But where would we be without it? Without it. Without it. So, we'll have the ln of 9 minus the ln of 4 minus 4 times the ln of x minus the ln of y. And that should be the answer if I didn't miss anything and I don't believe I did. Yep, there you go. This one was easier than the other one. I should have put this first. Okay, now. There is a problem in your homework that has a video with it. It's one of those. And um, you're not going to know how to work it if I don't remind you of something. I mean, you're going to see this in the video. You really need to watch the video on um, this problem I'm thinking of, the last two of the video problems. But I want to remind you that the square root of x can also be written as x to the one half power, okay? The fifth root of x, or the fifth root of seven, hey, what the heck? The fifth root of seven can also be written as seven to the one fifth power. 
so that when you have something like log base b, base anything, of x, uh-uh, the fifth root of x, this is how you're going to handle it. First, you write it like this. Then you use the power rule. Okay, don't forget your rational powers. Let me make up another one for you. How about the seventh root? It doesn't need to be that long. What am I doing? But ignore it. Of, I don't know, X? No, let's use a number. The seventh root of 15. Raised to the second power. No, I don't want that. There are reasons not to use it too. Complicates life. There. If you were taking the log of this, or that's log base 10, so if you were taking the log of that, you would rewrite it first this way. The log of 15 to the 3 sevenths power. And then you'd write it as three sevenths times the log of 15. In all likelihood, unless they ask you to do something else. But most of the time, that's what you do. So on that note, I am now at your disposal to go back over any of these problems you'd like me to go back over, or to call it a day and say I don't have any more to share with you, but I do recommend you study this stuff a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. And then have a wonderful Thanksgiving. And a wonderful break and get some sleep. Do a little partying, not too much. There's nothing worse than trying to study on a hangover. I remember those years. Yes, I do. Well, you know, there's a limit to how much you remember when you've got a bad hangover and what you did before, but we're not going to go into that. I'm a respectable woman now.